welcome back to the After Effects tutorials. This is lesson four, and it's going to focus on how to use keying. Oftentimes people call it chroma keying. You might notice it when you watch the news and you see the weather person with the map behind them. That's a green screened map into the scene. Uh, in Hollywood, a lot of the uh, adventure scenes or stunts are usually done in front of a green screen where the background then is added in plus any 3D objects to give it realism. So let's take a look at how to do this. To get started first go to your After Effects Lessons folder. Let's make a new folder called Lesson 4. And this will be where we save our work for this lesson. Now what I'll have you do, you can minimize this, is let's go ahead and open After Effects. Once opened, we're going to ignore this welcome screen again. And we'll save this right now so that it is in our folder. File. Notice save isn't really alive yet because we haven't done anything. So save as. And navigate to your folder. Find lesson four. And then call this lesson four. Okay, so now it's saved where we want it to be. So to get started we're going to import a video clip of an actor in front of a green screen. Find your project panel and again if your panels move around you can always go to window workspace, set up standard, you can do effects because we are going to work with effects but they're very similar. They just move around the windows. If a window is missing, don't forget to come through here to find it. If you don't see your project, you can always make sure it's checked to make sure it's on the screen. All right, I'm going to double click in the project panel and I'm going to navigate to the sample footage folder. And there's a video called Tino Fall. Select that to import. Now we're going to take the Tino Fall movie and make a comp by placing it on the Make New Comp button. And remember, this helps to make a composition that is preset to the video's length and sizes. So here we have a green screen of an actor who walks in front of it. And all of a sudden, an explosion occurs, which knocks him backwards. So what we're going to do here is clean this up and make it look like the idea of a Hollywood explosion. Of course, there would be a, a lot of things involved with the, what's going to be in the background, what exploded. But we're going to keep this simple as a starting tutorial. So the first thing I'd like to do is show you about how to use the chroma key itself to take the green screen away. It can also be a blue. Essentially any color can be keyed, but normally it's green or blue because those particular colors don't show up in the human skin and helps not to have fade out. Let's go ahead and make sure we touch the Tino Fall layer, go to Effect, and we're looking for keying. It's down here. And the green screen, blue screen effect is called key light. And there it is. Once you select key light, it brings up the effects controls panel with the key light uh, functions and features. To make this work, what you do is you take the eyedropper tool for screen color to select the, what color you're going to key out. And when you select it, you can touch the screen and essentially the green is gone. It's showing the default background layer I had as red. You might not have anything. To check that, I'm going to go to Composition Settings and I'm going to select that color. I'd rather make it white. I think it's kind of hard to see. So there we are with white. So now we can see some of the green screen is out, some of it's not. A better way to actually see if your chroma key is working, two things. First, turn on the transparency switch right here. And when you do that, it'll show you nothing in the background, no color, no anything, just this kind of what's not there it is a checker pattern. But you can still tell that there's some green screen still not taken out over here while the rest is pretty clean. Another thing to do when you are doing any keying is to make sure your visuals look right when we make adjustments. So I don't leave my resolution at half. I turn it up to full. This sometimes slows the computer down because it has to render more of the image, 
but you can actually make sure that everything is as you would expect it to look. All right, so what can we do to clean the green screen up? Well, there are some features like screen gain and screen balance at play, and there's two others that people oftentimes overlook under screen matte. If you go into that, you've got clip white and clip black. These will help a lot as well. I can increase the black, which actually decreases the black that's in there, and that cleans up the screen quite a while, quite a bit. You can also take the white down a little bit so that everything doesn't disappear. So these are our options. I'm going to reset them. Right click on any feature in effects controls or anywhere in the program resets it. Your screen gain, you can increase that. And that actually is doing a pretty good job. I'm thinking about I'm going to go too far, maybe about 100 128. I can take the balance and play with it a little bit. You can see that the green screen is starting to bleed into the actual footage back there. So I want to be careful. I also want to watch the actor. His hair has changed if I went too high with screen balance. I think the screen balance for this clip should probably be keeping his hair intact about mid-50s, 55, 56. I'm going to reduce screen gain to 125. And I'm going to change the clip white. Still have some more green screen there, so I'm going to increase the clip black. I think I'm pretty happy with that. 26 on clip black, 83 on clip white. All right, so now that we've got that taken care of, we can actually uh, do what's called a, a mat, which creates a shape layer, which can be used in many ways in After Effects, from creating shapes over photographs for a cool picture montage to make them look uh, a different shape than a traditional rectangle or square to uh, using them for cutting out video in a garbage mat. So what we're going to do is touching the Tino fall layer, making sure it's selected. We're going to grab the pen tool out of the toolbar. When you click on the pen tool, your mouse in the window here will turn into a pen. What we're going to do, I'm going to make sure that I'm sitting at at least fit. Okay, We're going to click and create points to cut out everything we don't want from the outside. Be careful not to cut into the video area or some of that will still appear so make sure you cut everything out. You keep clicking and it makes a new point as you work your way around the screen. Finally connecting. Make sure that you're actually connecting. The last point will create a mask path and everything on the outside goes away. So now we've got a pretty clean looking area here so we can apply a background in our effect. I'm going to switch back to the mouse tool. At this point I'm also going to turn the transparency toggle switch off so I can see what I'm going to be putting into the video itself. Now there's a lot of different things that you can add into a scene like this to try to make it look real. What I'm going to do is add a background, maybe a, well, let's do the explosion first. So we'll add the explosion. So to get the explosion, we need to be in our project panel to import it. I'm going to double click to import, but first I'm going to make sure that you see what file that you need. I've got some folders of After Effects stuff, I call it, and in them I have a lot of different things that are useful in After Effects to create things, but uh, Video Copilot was the starting point for a lot of my learning and I, I grabbed some of their products early on in my training for After Effects. Some of them um, action essentials, and blood splatter and explosions and things of that nature, evolutions, um, pretty cool one as well. So some of these things uh, we have in class were some of the early things sold at Video Copilot, not through 3D models or anything, but uh, things that can make uh, your editing uh, a little cooler. For example, if I go into evolutions, you don't have this, so just follow with me for a second. Um, into the evolution itself, it has some folders here. And again, you can find this on my desktop, so you could grab any of these things. For example, arrows. Maybe I want to point at something, and I can place this pre-made After Effects arrow into a composition, or even into Premiere for a video. And what's nice is there's no actual uh, background. It's clear so you can see through to your video. For example, here's an arrow. And if I hit play, 
the arrow in this kind of comes in like that and points. So all the black area would be see-through. So you'd still see your video, and this arrow would point at something in your in your uh, project. What other kind of things are here? Um, you know, flourishes are kind of cool. You can add a flourish to the side of a screen to add a little bit of, of flare to a video. That could look pretty cool coming out of the corner of your screen while some title pops in. So again, a lot of these things, if you want to take a look at them, are on a couple of my machines in the room. Um, we're going to go in, and I'm going to grab something from Action Essentials. And things like, again, bullet holes, explosions, fog, different types of uh, like muzzle flashes for if a gun goes off. So you can actually see these before you use them. Oops. Yeah, they're pretty quick, but they give the effect that you might be looking for. I'm going to go into explosions, and I'm going to make sure that I put um, explosion number one into your folders on your desktop. If you look in Land School, you'll find this explosion sitting there. You can move it into your sample footage folder inside of your After Effects lessons like I'm going to do right now. So I've got my sample footage folder. I'm going to drag over this effect into here so that I've got explosions. So now we're going to go and import this into your After Effects project. So again, make sure you took that explosion and transferred it into your sample footage folder. Because now we're going to go grab it by importing. We find explosion 1, open it. If we take explosion 1 and we drop it into the composition, it now is part of the items in this composition. If I move forward to right where he begins to go backwards in the explosion itself and move the file, the explosion file, into place to right where he's about to jump back, we can time this so that it looks like the explosion cost him to go back. Now, of course, the, this explosion is really small. We need to make it a little bit bigger to have better impact and see more of it since he is blocking it out. And remember, the explosion's underneath him, so it's behind. If I were to move this to the top, it'd be on this side of him and it wouldn't look right. So make sure the explosion's in the second track. Um, let's go ahead and make it bigger. You could touch explosion and hit S for scale to size it. You could also simply, touching the explosion, grab one of the handles and resize it manually. Be careful because you can change the shape high and low, um, control Z. If you hold shift and use the handles, it'll stay, I believe so. Well, that only works in Premiere. So be careful when you scale by hand because you might mess up its size and shape. I'm going to just do it with the scale button here, make a pretty nice size explosion. Looks like about 320. And now when we play it, the explosion happens and the guy gets knocked off his feet. So, you know, it's kind of plain looking, white background doesn't, isn't how you'd really see it in Hollywood. You could add a um, texture in the background, like a, a brick wall, for example, to make it look like he was outside of a building. And again, to do that, if you check your land school folder, um, I will have sent you over another file, which is going to be the background of a brick wall. Find where I actually have that. Um, it was Riot Gear. Crunchy textures, high resolution. Found them. Okay. So I'm going to take this brick wall and I'm going to put it. Or you're going to do the same thing. Take the brick wall and put it into your sample footage folder. Again, you can find that in your land school. And now. If we go back to After Effects, we can import this brick wall. There it is, open, and place it at the bottom of the stack, which puts it in the back. Now, of course, this, these bricks look a little bit uh, too large to be real. Obviously, if you stand in front of a brick wall, these bricks won't look like that. So we need to change the scale of the brick wall as well. So I'm going to knock the scale back a little. Don't go too far, or it won't cover your screen. But I think if I go to this size here, it looks a little bit more real. And we can also take Tino scale 
We'll make him a little bit smaller. Take his position to fix it. Again, to change to get these position and scales, I'm hitting the letters. If you recall from an earlier lesson, if you hit S, scale will come up. If you hit P, position will come up. If you hit T, opacity comes up, and R would be rotation. Back to P for position. You can also find these by simply opening up the layer and finding the transform properties where you will be able to see the same things. Another quick note is earlier we added a mask which drew out the green screen for us. So the mask layer is added. Inside of this mask layer is the path of the mask which you can still adjust and cha change a feathering. I touch feathering and I adjust it. You can't see much here, but you can kind of tell that I'm feathering off the green screen mask, which is now letting the old background be seen. Um, the opacity of the mask itself, and so I can make him some, somewhat see-through, and the mask expansion, which just makes the mask larger, which we don't want to do because we use the mask to get rid of all the old footage. But there are some features that always appear in anything you add to a layer. Also, the effect of key light has been added. If we wanted to look at it here, we could. And the same things exist that you found in the effects controls. So there's two ways to work. Why you might want to work on it down here instead of in the effects controls panel is because this is where keyframing would occur if you were going to keyframe. We don't keyframe keying. So I'm going to close that down. All right, so we resized him, put him in front of this wall, and now the explosion occurs, and there's your video knocked off his feet. All right, make sure you save this. Oh, wait a minute, one thing I forgot. You might notice he's walking in and the green screen mask has a cutout here. The only way to fix that is to slide him over, move him over. So I'm going to touch Tino Fall. I'm going to hit P for position and I'm going to use the first measurement to move him off of screen. And actually I think I'm going to make him a little bit larger to scale. So that way we can get that bent part here of the mask off screen without taking too much off screen. Back to P for position. I'm going to adjust this up a little so he's a little taller. And I think right about here so we don't notice his head not coming in properly. So now he'll walk in from the off screen section. And then the explosion will occur and he'll be knocked on, off his feet. All right, click away and that looks good. So control S to save. And... That's it. We'll let you move on to lesson five next.